Good evening and welcome to uh, the Veterans Memorial Intermediate School Attendance Boundary Committee presentation. This is uh, September the 21st and we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome. Um, also joining us this evening on our call, I'm Chris Hines, Deputy Superintendent. Also with me is Mr. Chris McCord, our Assistant Superintendent for Operations. We also have Ms. Sarah Blakelock, our Director of Communications, Ms. Jessica Villarreal, my assistant, and Mr. Rodrigo Chavez, who is our Director of Community Outreach. So um, thank you for joining us. And we're going to go ahead and take you through kind of a, a brief uh, kind of rundown on where we are with drawing boundaries for a new intermediate school and, and hopefully catch everybody up to date and, and what's going on. So let me get started and uh, see if we can go from there. First, let me talk about the district in general. We are we are growing. Uh, we have seen in the last two years roughly uh, gains of over 3,000 students. Since this time last year, we've grown over 3,700 students or 3,860 students exactly. Um, and you know this is about 2,000 student growth beyond where we thought we would be. Uh, in our previous demographic projection. So growth is accelerating in our district. Uh, we actually projected just under 70,000 this year, and then we've exceeded that by more than 1,000. So we have seen a fairly significant increase in the rate of growth, and we believe this rate of growth will continue in our district um, and will be shared as part of our updated uh, demographic study later. So we currently have 37 of our 65 campuses that are over capacity, and we are at 100% of our district's overall capacity, so we're crowded. Uh, we utilize 217 portable classrooms, which is equals to almost 4,000 seats or roughly four elementary schools. So uh, we are crowded. We're trying to make it work. This is a map of our fast-growing areas in our school district. And you can see that we have growth really happening all over. It's kind of dispersed. We have it on the west side of Conroe, the east side of Conroe, out in the Caney Creek feeder areas, along the 242 corridor as well, and, um, and down in the Grand Oaks area, and even uh, up along the 1488 corridor. So we're seeing up and up old Conroe Road, which is off of 1488. So a lot of, a lot of growth going on currently in the district all over the place. Um, and, and so part of what goes into uh, making decisions about spaces for the district is, you know, what do we have available? We also look at the types and number of services and programs that we offer at campuses, and we look at staffing ratios. And so those things will impact about how many students we can fit. So you might see campus capacity ebb and flow a little bit based on programs and, and numbers of students. So we do have some new space coming. Um, we actually added some this year. We opened up a Gordon Reed, which is a pre-K through sixth grade campus that, that has a capacity of 950 students. And we also added 10 classrooms at Conroe High School ninth grade campus this year. And so we did add some seats. And then this coming year for the 23-24 school year, we will be opening Veterans Memorial Intermediate School, uh, which will have a capacity of over 1,000 students at 1050 uh, it is in the Caney Creek feeder, and then Hines Elementary will also open in the Grand Oaks feeder. Uh, in addition, we're going to be opening up a new Moorhead Junior High School, which has a capacity of 1,600 students. So I want to kind of take you through um, a little bit more about how that's going to work, and, and really that's what leads to Veterans Memorial. And then in 2024, we are planning to open Bartlett Elementary School in the northeast part of our school district, and that will provide relief. Uh, for crowding at Austin Elementary, Creighton Elementary, Anderson Elementary, and Patterson. So that's coming, um, but that's not until 2024. So we're working on what is going to happen for 2023. And so just let's focus a little bit uh, on the Caney Creek feeder. Um, and that's where those, the 23 and the 24 campuses will have an impact. Uh, and you can see we're very crowded at Austin and Creighton, which is why we have Bartlett coming on board in 24. And we are very crowded at Grangerland, which is why we have Veterans Memorial um, about to open. And then we're very crowded at Moorhead Junior High School, which, which is why we're going to have uh, a replacement campus for Moorhead Junior High. So Moorhead Junior High School is at 133% capacity. It has 11 portable classrooms and Grangerland's at 112% capacity with 10 portables. And give everybody a little history. Um, the new Moorhead Junior High School is going to be built at 
13715 Grangerland Road, and it's going to have a capacity of 1,600 students, and it will replace this current facility, which has a capacity of 1,050 students. To give you a little background, um, we are going to be repurposing Moorhead Junior High back to an intermediate school in August of 2023. That intermediate school is going to be Veterans Memorial Intermediate. So when you hear us talk about Veterans Memorial Intermediate, it is a building that is being repurposed, right? It's our current Moorhead Junior High School. And instead of having seventh and eighth grade students there, it will have fifth and sixth grade students. And it's going to be located at the current Moorhead location, which is on 1485. Now, Veterans Memorial Intermediate originally opened as Grangerland Intermediate School in 2001. It, it uh, moved to its current location on FM 3083. Um, and then at that time, the 1485 um, location was converted to Moorhead Junior High School, which previously was housed at Caney Creek High School. So I know I got everybody nice and confused, but, but that's the short of it. We opened up Moorhead Junior High as an intermediate. We switched it to a junior high when the junior high moved out of Caney Creek High School and moved across the street and we, we converted into a junior high school. And so, uh, but now it, you know, Fast forward several years, we've outgrown that campus and with bigger students, bigger, we need some bigger hallways, need a larger campus. So um, that's going to be the new junior highs coming. So again, this is a picture of the current Moorhead Junior High School, which will convert back to an intermediate school. It's, uh, so everybody's very familiar with this campus. It is also very unique for intermediate schools in our district because it has two gyms. We added a gym when it became a junior high and it also has science labs. So they'll have some great science opportunities there. And in addition, it has two tennis courts. So um, a lot of neat features for an intermediate school. And then I'll mention, we've already mentioned the new Moorhead Junior High School, which is opening in August of 2023, with a capacity of 1600 students. And there's some aerial views of that campus being cleared out. That's a, uh, to the right is a detention area. And back here is where our uh, transportation uh, facilities will go in. And you can, we're looking back towards Caney Creek High School. You can see the turf field and the high school campus and the practice fields. And this is going to be the football field for the junior high. So um, it's going to be outstanding views of it. It's coming along nicely. So to do this process of kind of determining, so kind of now that we've got everybody caught up, we're opening, we're moving Moorhead Junior High to a new building, we're turning the current Moorhead into an intermediate, and we're going to split Grangerland uh, intermediate. And that's, that's what's going to happen for 2023. So to do that, we've got to draw some new boundaries. And uh, we have a committee that's working on this process. We have principals and parents from each of our elementaries in Grangerland Intermediate. Uh, we also get input from the other, uh, the junior high and the high school principal. And we also have some district representatives, some of which don't vote actually in the process, but they are involved in providing our committee uh, information and assistance. So um, they do a great job and they've already started working on solving for this equation, right? How do we uh, populate the new school? And that's really what our objective of the ABC committee is. So we're, we're coming together to draw a boundary, to populate Veterans Memorial Intermediate. And in doing so, we wanna provide relief to Grangerland Intermediate School. The Grangerland Intermediate has a capacity of 1,050 students. If you're not familiar, we actually added a few classrooms on a few years ago, but we've outgrown that addition. And uh, we will be, uh, we currently use 10 portable classrooms. But this area is growing. The Candy Creek feeder is growing. And currently, by 2028, just six years away, we, we project an enrollment of over 2,200. So in six years, we think both these intermediates are going to fill right back up and uh, with the rapid growth that's happening in the Candy Creek area. Uh, and this will give us a capacity of roughly 2,100, uh, 2,150 in that range to serve fifth and sixth grade students. So we talked about some of that rapid growth that's coming. And you know, we've talked about areas. This is uh, currently in the Milam area. And we see areas on the north side of the Caney Creek feeder along 105 areas. We know there's growth coming in. We've, we've seen the growth along Willis-Waukegan. And then there's growth, a lot of growth coming in 
especially on the 242 corridor. So uh, as we go further south, so there's a lot of development coming all throughout the Caney Creek feeder. And, and this is really what, what has kind of led us to thinking about, okay, how are we going to draw the boundaries? Now, the committee's been working on it. We have some goals. So when we start this process, we always want to be mindful that we want to provide quality education. We want it to be efficient and effective. Um, we want to solve for crowding. And we also want to plan for future growth. So we want to keep that in the back of our mind. As you can see, we're, we're seeing growth throughout the Caney Creek feeder. Uh, we also want to reduce crowding at Granger land. And we also want to leave a little bit of room for some future growth, and we want to provide opportunities for feedback. And that's really why we're having this uh, this this program this evening. And uh, we want to make sure and we'll point out some features on our website that that enable people to get us some feedback for the committee. We look at a lot of things. We look at our campus capacities, look at community input, demographic factors, uh, history, geography, uh, existing neighborhoods, history. Uh, we want to minimize impact on families. We know when we change boundaries that it's a disruption to family routines, and uh, we, we take that very seriously. We look very carefully at it. At the same time, we know we can't continue to be crowded, so we need to make some changes. Uh, we also want to be mindful of what's coming in the future and, and, and kind of make sure we're keeping that in mind as we make decisions. Because we're fast growing, we're not going to be finished when we when we do this process, right? We're going to, we're going to have to keep adding schools. And every time we add schools, we're going to have to come back and look at the boundaries and how to be efficient and, and distributing um, the, the student population. But we know that schools are communities. We know families have a history with particular schools. We know they choose where they live to go to school. So we want to be very careful about uh, doing this. We want to make sure we're looking at all of our options. So we don't take it lightly. We're committed to making sure, regardless of where you know, our students end up, we want them to have a quality educational experience and we're committed to that. And we believe that if a, if a student changes school to another school, they will pick up right where they left off. Um, and then our, our timeline is we're really aiming for a, wrapping this up in December. So we have two processes going on. This one we're gonna to try to end in December and the other one will probably go into January. Uh, and then that starts a whole nother um, series of decisions. And that's why we kind of try to work this out. So once we know who's going to Granger Land, who's going to Veterans Memorial. Uh, we'll open up a, a process for transfers. And then once we settle the population, then we'll start staffing and we'll name principal and we'll, you know, we'll start moving on and making all those decisions and getting ready for the school year. I will point out, and this is kind of our little disclaimer this evening. We talk about numbers and we pull numbers from our um, system and, and say, this is what we project. We're talking about geocoded students, and that is, these are students who live in those attendance areas currently. Um, what we do know is people move in and people move out all the time. In addition, at a school, we might also have students who transfer to the school because their parent might work there or because there's a program that's there that's not at someplace else, so we, they have to come to where the program is. And so... Um, when we do their planning, we plan for geocoded, which means generally you can add a few students to the total because uh, we usually get a few students that come with uh, mom or dad to work. So this is a look at our current um, boundaries for the elementary schools in the Caney Creek feeder. And something I'll highlight, you know, I mentioned up front that you have another elementary coming in 2024 that we're going to use to provide relief to Austin attendance zone and Creighton attendance zone. And, um, and because of that, tonight you're going to see some scenarios that pretty much reflect grouping uh, our intermediate schools into a feeder. And so, um, and you'll see that in the model, but I wanted to kind of explain why we pair these two, because what we anticipate is when we get another elementary school, we're going to redo these boundaries for these two elementaries. And when we do so, it would be nice to know that we don't have to go back and change their intermediate school. So we're trying to be mindful of that and know that whatever decision we make, hopefully will hold. Even when we redraw the elementary boundaries, they will still go to the same intermediate school. So hopefully that makes sense and, and you can follow that. But that's what we're, we're going to try to look at as we look at some scenarios this evening. And we're just going to briefly look at a few that the committee's already looked at. 
And um, again, this is the blue represents the myelin. Uh, the, the kind of the purple color is Hope Elementary. Yellow, and that's a rapidly growing area. Also San Jacinto. Um, and then up to the north, Austin, and the red, and then the kind of the lime green color is Creighton. So these are our current boundaries. And I just wanted to kind of give a little background of why you'll see us pair uh, the boundaries kind of a north-south. And just to kind of orient everybody, uh, 3083 kind of runs through um, this area. And of course, 2090 runs off this way. And then this old Houston Road or 1485 kind of runs up through here and goes north. And, you know, we'll, we're not going to spend, I'm not, you know, now that I've said, look, we're, we're going to try to keep Austin and Creighton paired and Hope and uh, San Jacinto paired. We're not going to spend really a lot of time talking about those zones in those areas. Really, you'll hear us talk a little bit about, and you'll want to look at the differences um, in the central part of the attendance boundary, really where Milam Elementary is and Grangerland Intermediate is, uh, what I, you know, what I call Pantherland. So in Pantherland, this is the area that is south of uh, 2090. Um, it is east of, and north of 3083. Um, it is sandwiched in the, between uh, Old Houston on the other side. That area, and it's where the junior high is gonna be off Grangerland Road. That area is one of those areas that we, we look at carefully because it's right there. It's right across the street from the Veterans Memorial Intermediate. It's got Grangerland Intermediate right there. Uh, Milam is right there. The high school is right there. The new junior high is right there. So, um, so a lot of that area is very compressed. And so you'll see us, we'll have boxes that kind of expand that in the maps. And I just want to show those to you. But we'll be talking a lot about that area. Or, and, we'll, and we'll also refer to some of these areas on the south. 31A, um, down this area, which is like Ranch Estates uh, in 30, um, which is the um, the Lost Lakes McAllister Road area in 30, which is over here, and then 29 High Tower Road area. So these areas are kind of, will get moved around in different scenarios, and then there'll be some movement here in the in the central part. Uh, which is uh, it also includes 28C, that Red Leaf Valley area. And then going on the, uh, the east side, northeast side of 3083, we, you'll see us refer to the 26D Rocky Road area and Crater Hill 27C and 27E area. So um, this kind of just lays out the whole Milam attendance boundary. So really all of the variations focus on ways we might break that up in terms of which intermediate they feed into. And one of the things that we look at and really are trying to understand is where's the growth happening? And right now we're seeing growth. We're going to see growth in this, certainly this area um, up here, which feeds into Milam. And we know there's growth going on in the 105 corridor and even north, there's several neighborhoods going on in the Austin. Uh, and then as we mentioned, there's several neighborhoods coming in along the 242 corridor. So really, you know, the bad news, good news, however you want to look at it, is it's it's everywhere. So we have a lot of growth everywhere. And again, this is our current feeder. And you can see this is the box that kind of breaks out. And again, that's the area I referred to as Pantherland, but this is the Red Leaf Valley area. And um, you can kind of see the numbers represent our school locations where we have uh, Milam and Grangerland in the high school in Moorhead Junior High currently. Uh, the other area that gets mentioned is 27F, which is just on the north side of 2090. And again, that's right there close. You could come out of the neighborhood and go left towards Veterans Memorial. You could go right to the light uh, to come to Grangerland. So these are areas we want to look at. And so really our goal is that we, we can tolerate some, some imbalance, but we want it to be uh, too, too imbalanced. So um, Mr. McCord, is there anything you want to add uh, as we kind of look at these maps. No, I just said we have fast growth everywhere. So when we plan, we really need to be strategic in what we put at each campus. And we know we have fast growth in the north and fast to potentially a little faster growth in the south. So we really need to be strategic because we need these buildings to be great for kids and parents and to work for a while. So uh, there's a lot of thought that's gone into this for a number of months. 
And we certainly welcome input. And uh, Dr. Hans will give you some input on how to add your thoughts or comments at our attendance boundary website at the end of this presentation. I will. Thank you, sir. So, again, we formed this. Uh, we actually did a committee back in 2020 when we worked on Hope uh, Elementary Boundary. And because of that, we actually started looking at um, this then, because when we were drawing the boundaries for Hope and Milam and and, and we were in Austin and Creighton, we were trying to think about how is that going to work when we have an intermediate school open? So we knew there was one coming and we were trying to anticipate that. So we wanted to, we did get out the intermediate maps and kind of played with it. We didn't make any decisions, but we certainly aren't starting uh, from scratch. So we, we're going to kind of pick up where that group kind of left off and we're going to share a few things with you. I am going to... Um, Let's see, squit, switch over. I'm going to switch over here to um, back and forth, probably toggle between a PDF that has a little bit more detail than what you're seeing on the screen. Um, but this is going to be scenario one. And let me kind of flip to a little bit more detailed map. It's a little bit a little easier to read, I think. And so as we look at that, you can begin to see, um, as we talked about, we have Austin, San Jacinto, um, I mean, Austin and Creighton, and then we have San Jacinto Hope kind of paired. And, and what that means is that school, everybody in the school will go to this, then they leave fourth grade, will go to the same intermediate school to, and uh, join up. And so we try to, you know, rather than have three schools where we split them up and, you know, we try to avoid that if we can. Uh, this way we can keep two elementaries kind of pure feeder right now. And as I mentioned, we know there's another elementary coming, which is why we wanted to keep Creighton and Austin paired because that's where we know we got to do work to relieve crowding. Um, and so this is just one map as we kind of started with the scenario one. And as you know, as you kind of look at the scenario one, we can see um, that the 2060, 27C, 27E, 27F, 20 8E and 28D stay at Grangerland, and then the southeastern sections um, kind of move to Veterans Memorial. So you see, um, and really it's it's down in this area, move over. 31A goes to Grangerland. We talked about that a little bit. That's the, ran the ranch estates, and that goes to Grangerland. And then this is kind of the box, kind of looking at the, the kind of the uh, increased view, uh, magnified view. And you can see as we look closer in, this has Red Leaf Valley going out um, on the 1485, that area uh, going to um, Veterans Memorial. And then these other areas um, go to Grangerland. And it's something that, you know, we're gonna keep looking at and try to get feedback. So if you live in, in this area and you have a, a strong opinion about what's easier for you to get to and from, if you would, Certainly get that comment to us. We are interested in that feedback. The difficulty is, and you're going to see this in the scenarios, is that we don't, we're still not quite getting the balance we would like to see. So in scenario one, if you look at the numbers at the top, uh, we have 463 students that end up at Grangerland and 700 at Veterans Memorial. So we wish it was a little closer. You know, I'd like to see the Grangerland number get into the fives and the Veterans Memorial number in the sixes. Um, so it's a little less disparity. They're both going to grow. We know that, but we want to we want to get them a little closer uh, to balanced than that. But but it's a great starting point. And so um, that's scenario one. Mr. McCord, anything you want to add to that? No, just the delta there between Grangeland and Veterans Memorial. It's a it's a little more than we would like. It's not optimal, but uh, for a map for a start, it's a pretty clean map to start with. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess we're ready to look at scenario number two, Dr. Hans. All right, this is scenario two. And again, this one, um, very similar. You can see a few changes inside the box. So we have 28D and 28C. This, this goes to Grangerland. And then we leave these other areas of 28E and 27F that go to Veterans Memorial. So that's a change, and um, 31A is still going to go in uh, to Grangerland. So further, further south, 
into that um, range of states. So that's that's pretty much it. You can see scenario two um, gets us a little closer, 481 to 690. Mr. McCord, anything you want to add to that? No, uh, just the biggest change between one and two is just inside that triangle of the 1485, 2090, and uh, 3083 corridor. So just... Uh, looking at what we're going to do in there. We want to make it best for the families and kids. We know it's close to both campuses, and uh, a lot of people will ask at times, why do we have so many uh, facilities located in that triangle area? And the reason is, is because that's where the utilities were and are. So that's why and we really want to get it right in the triangle. Okay, so we'll go to scenario three. Maybe, there we go. Scenario three, this kind of goes the other way in numbers. Um, and we pulled in, uh, looking at this, we pulled Red Leaf Valley back into Grangerland and really kept that whole area inside of 2090. And even on the north side there, they all come back towards Grangerland. Um, and then if you notice 31A is a, is a change, and 31A is going to go to um, Veterans Memorial Intermediate School. So you can change, I mean, you can see some changes there. Um, it's still a nice looking map. I, you know, again, I think that when we, when we made those changes, we, in terms of enrollment, we kind of lost a little bit of that balance. Um, Mr. McCord, anything else you want to point out about scenario three? Yeah. Now, you will provide a lot of transportation in the area because of the nature of the roads. But uh, we also realized that some students, just like I did when I was a kid, are going to want to walk to school. So uh, we're just trying to take care of, anticipate, and solve as many issues and make it the best for families. So I guess Dr. Hines alluded to the biggest thing about scenario three is that entire triangle area inside by Red Leaf Valley uh, and all the different the three roads. Everybody would go to Grangerland to be really clean as far as that goes. Okay, awesome. Let's see. I think, oops, I went, made, a mistake. made a little switch here. Let me go back. So this is, let me go to scenario four, 3.1. So we have a scenario 3.1. And in 3.1, it's the same as uh, three, with the exception is, you know, we brought 31A back over because we looked at 31 and we said, well, we need more students back over at uh, Grangerland. So we pulled 31A down in the southwest side here and we pulled it back over. And that's really the big change between uh, 3 and 3.1. Anything else you want to add there, Mr. McCoy? No, it's on the same side of the road. But however, just as it is to get just about anywhere in Montgomery County, at times you're going to have to turn left. But it does keep it on the same side of the road. Yeah, and, and then going back to your comment too about that area where the, all the campuses are, we, you know, we do plan on providing transportation regardless of where you live in that area. Um, but we do know that the proximity of schools to a home in this area might make it tempting to walk, even though uh, there's not really a strong infrastructure. There's no sidewalks, and it's not something that we recommend. So let's go to the next one, which is three point two. And 3.2, a little tweaked, a little different. Uh, we, we go up and we pick up in addition to 31A, 30 um, comes over, but we give, we push back Red Valley, Red Leaf Valley back, come on back with the exit on Old Houston to come out to go to uh, Veterans Memorial. And so that's a net loss of some students. And again, we didn't, we didn't hit the 500 mark and we're back in the sevens there, but um, a little tweak, just playing with it. I know we've had some feedback from some folks that might prefer to go out on the old Houston side than on the 3083 side. We just don't know if we can support it number wise, but that's a certainly it's worth looking at. So that's what this option represents. Um, anything else you want to share about that, Mr. McCord? No, just the Delta is a, a little more, and it, the difference is a little more, and it won't matter for a couple of years, but there's going to come a point in time where it really does matter. So that's why we're looking at it so hard, so difficultly and so uh, intently. All right, I think that I think that covers all the scenarios that are still in play. We'll probably add, uh, I anticipate another one or so. Let me go back to my PowerPoint. I'm gonna 
Fast forward. There's one that we've already taken out of the mix, and that's scenario four. And that one, we actually, tr we were looking for better numbers, and this one did provide way better numbers. Um, it paired, um, it paired Austin with Hope and Sanjak with Creighton. Um, there's two problems with this map and, and, and why it's no longer under consideration. One problem is Creighton and San Jacinto both probably um, are on, uh, you mentioned Delta, the word Delta, they're both on a curve to really, really grow very quickly. And, um, and so it, it, it's, it wouldn't take long for that to get out of whack in terms of the numbers. Uh, but the other problem was, as I mentioned earlier, with another elementary coming to provide relief, it would then create another split elementary feeding into two different elementaries. So um, chances are Austin and Creighton would both become split as well as Milam. And, and that's a, it's certainly an option. It's something that we looked at, but, but at this point, that's not something that we wanted to keep looking at. So I, I anticipate from the, based on what we've done so far at the committee, we'll continue to look at feedback, but I imagine that we'll try to chisel a bit more to get better balance um, but stay with the, the split that you see in the other scenarios that are a little bit more evenly split with a north-south division. So the other thing we're looking at, and, and this is a, a just kind of another chart in, in a way that we look at the information. We also are looking at our bilingual totals, and we want to be mindful of our bilingual program. In all of our scenarios, we will have a large bilingual program, large enough to support a bilingual program. And then the other thing we were looking at is when we divide it, how many students in that intermediate school came from Milam? And that's what the blue numbers represent, right? So we wanted to make sure we didn't split it so imbalanced that, that when I moved over from Milam and my friend went to Veterans Memorial and I went to Grangerland, that I didn't know anybody there. And so um, we, we, we were mindful of that. We are watching that. And both of them get a group of students in all of our scenarios, a group of students, but we are watching that as well. It's something that we're, we're interested in. So we are tracking that. So, we, you know, we get, we've had several questions. You know, one of the questions that's come to us has been, you know, we've got a new junior high, got a new intermediate, what, what's impacted? It's just fifth and sixth grade. We are still going to only have one junior high school in the Caney Creek Feeder. It's just going to be a bigger building that can handle more students. Um, and so, we're, but we are opening a new intermediate. And so we're redrawing boundaries that will impact fifth and sixth graders. Both intermediates are gonna feed into Moorhead Junior High School. Anything you wanna to add to that, Mr. McCord? No, sir, just uh, you know, once we implement this, Dr. Hines talked about students walking, but we're going to be providing transportation for the most part because of the hazardous road conditions. But We'll also look at traffic, doing what we can. When the new Moorhead Junior High comes on board, there's going to be a lot of folks right there in that central area. But I want you to know we, there's only so much we can do, but we're going to be working hard and efforting over the next few months to do what we can uh, to help with the fifth and sixth grade traffic, but the, the traffic in the entire area there right in the middle in Grangerland. So we'll go back to the some other questions we've had. We had a question about Title I bilingual special education. We don't have pre-K involved in this, but special. we do plan to have special education programs at both. Sometimes we have cluster programs in special education, so it might be at one campus, and we would send students to one campus where we cluster services. Um, all, both of these schools are gonna be Title I schools, and both of them will have bilingual programs. We know that already. Um, what happened? Other question we have is what happens if students? Uh, I want them to finish out at this at Grangerland, and the answer is, and we don't want to go to Veterans Memorial. We want to finish sixth grade here, and we've traditionally allowed that. Um, but but with the transfer means you have to provide transportation. We won't have transportation, so that that is an option. And then you know, and then if someone says, well, I, they have a fifth grade brother or sister, they want to go to, the answer is yes. We don't separate families. Um, we always get this question, how likely is it that my neighbor is going to be rezoned? Well, we've shown you some of the, kind of the options. You can see the, the most, the areas that are most considered at this point, but certainly until we're done, we don't really know the answer. Uh, what we're trying to achieve, like I said, is a, is, a, is a pretty good map that looks good, that makes sense, 
um, that is mindful of where people drive and move and the way traffic moves. But as Mr. McCord already alluded to, we know traffic is going to be impacted when we open a new intermediate. And we know it's going to be impacted with the junior high. So there are going to be changes to the the, the, the flow of traffic in that area. But um, we are going to certainly look at, um, you know, trying to impact the least number of people to do what we need to do. But at the same time, we want to achieve um, some balance. We don't want to open a school too small and we don't want to leave uh, some growth room on the, on the table. So what's next is we'll keep, we're going to keep presenting this information. We'll be back in October with another presentation that will probably be a little bit more defined by then in, a, in the next month. I anticipate our committee will uh, make some headway and be down to hopefully a decision to, to share with you. Um, but, but, you know, time will tell, but that's our kind of our goal. We'll be back. Um, we do have a website where all this information is available. I'm going to go live to that website in just a moment. So you can kind of get a feel for it. Uh, but it is, a, it is a process. There are two, as I mentioned, two zonings going on, and you'll see those on our website. But you're going to want to look at, for this information, Veterans Memorial Intermediate. Again, these are some upcoming presentations, October 25th. And at this one, we, 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 we hopefully will have a final proposal or something very close that we can show. But right now, we're still developing these scenarios. As I mentioned, those are on the website. So before we hang up, I'm going to bring up the website. Mr. McCord, anything you want to jump in and add? I would say while you do that, just uh, if you're going to give feedback or comments, we will share those with the committee. We take them seriously and embed it with all the due diligence it, it deserves. But lots of times it's a, there's inclination to add comments in life if we don't like something. But if you do see a scenario you like, or if you see a scenario you like and then you have a tweak that's doable, by all means, don't hesitate to tell us. So we want to hear cons and pros, and uh, we will follow through and read all of them, we promise. So thank you. And, and just let me just kind of close it out a little bit with the, the website, show you how this just kind of functions. If you go on the, the Conroe Independent School District main page and you'll see this icon that says the ABC, you can click on it. And it'll bring up our page. It tells you uh, our process. It mentions which two are under, under uh, consideration. Talks about growth. Talks about our goals and things we consider. And you know, in this case, we're going to go to the Veterans Memorial Intermediate website. And it brings up some information. Um, there's a link to the website for Veterans Memorial. There's not a lot on there yet, but as we as we get further into the year and decisions are made, we'll put more information up. When we, you know, we'll get a principal, then we'll get a mascot, and we'll we'll get some of that information up. And, you know, meet the teacher night, all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's coming, but but it takes time. And as I, as I mentioned, this is actually the first step, right? Defining who the community is, who's going to go to that school. Um, so we we have information about it. We do have a event coming up. This is where you'll see our scenarios. One, two, three. We've already slashed four. We haven't put 3.1 and 3.2 up yet. They'll come up. And then we are working on a 3.12. I know that should be up. There's also a way you can create your own and submit it. And there's a place to do some feedback. So there's a submission form that you click on. And as Mr. McCord mentioned, please, by all means, give feedback. And uh, it's something we share with our committee. Uh, prior to the next meeting, and then we'll, we'll see if there's any trends and patterns. There's a Q&A down at the bottom, but one of my favorite features that we have is if you are inclined to say, I want to play at home and I think I can do this, uh, you click on that and you can, um, you can, you can actually get um, the data. So I'm clicking on it. I'm going to open the file for Veterans Memorial. And it brings up a spreadsheet, and it's really easy to use in this case because we're only dealing with two campuses. Uh, when you deal with multiple campuses like uh, elementary campus rezoning, it gets a little bit more confusing. But uh, it's really easy to do. You just come over and you find a section or an area, and you can refer to those maps that are on the website. You just find an area, you highlight it, you cut it and paste it. You move it over here. Paste it and boom, and it'll subtract it from the totals. 
and add it to this total and you can kind of build your own scenario. Um, you just save it and then you send it in to us and it's really that simple. So um, but label it and um, you can send it in to us and upload it. So it's a cool little feature, but we want to make sure you have an opportunity. If you have a better idea, we're certainly willing to look at it. Um, but those are all the kind of things that, that we're certainly interested in hearing about. But you kind of also picked up on the things that we're worried about, right? Cohort size, um, the, you know, a school feeding entirely into an intermediate if possible. We know it's, it's not going to be totally possible. Uh, we know when we open a new elementary and we pull from Austin and Creighton and create a new elementary, it will be a, a split elementary because we'll probably split between Bosman and Veterans Memorial. So uh, we do know that splits are part of us growing as a district as we have to add more schools, but um, it is something we're mindful of and we pay attention to. So that's kind of really the overview. And I want to say thank you for joining us this evening. And hopefully you found this informative and you can um, certainly reach out and submit any questions, uh, comments, and we'll, we'll share that with the committee and we'll get back. So, Mr. McCord, anything else you want to add before we sign off? No, we're boots on the ground. Same presentation, exact same presentation we did tonight virtually. We'll be doing live at Grangerland Intermediate, Intermediate at 6 p.m. tomorrow. Okay. So thank you very much. And uh, we were able to keep it under 45 minutes. So have a great evening. Good night.